The sun is an example of a fusion reactor. Inside the sun, hydrogen is fused into helium. This is done by the proton-proton chain reaction. Two hydrogen nuclei fuse to make a hydrogen-2, or deuterium, nucleus. The deuterium nucleus fuses with a hydrogen nucleus to make helium-3. When two helium-3 nuclei fuse, they make helium-4 and release two protons. Let's take the net reaction. Four hydrogen atoms fuse to make a helium-4 atom. Something interesting happens here. A mole is a common unit in chemistry which relates mass to number of atoms. Hydrogen-1 has a mass of 1.007825 grams per mole, and helium-4 has a mass of 4.002603 grams per mole. So if we fuse 4 moles of hydrogen into 1 mole of helium, we find that almost 3 hundredths of a gram has just disappeared. So what happened? The mass was converted to energy. You may be familiar with the equation E equals mc squared. We will actually use it here. We convert the mass loss to kilograms and multiply it by the speed of light squared to get the energy released, and we get 2.579 times 10 to the 12th joules. That's more than 2.5 trillion joules of energy, enough to power 64 average American homes for a year. From about 4 grams of hydrogen. Now the sun doesn't just fuse 4 grams of hydrogen, it fuses 600 million tons of it every second. That's a lot of energy. Another way helium is produced in stars is through the CNO cycle, which occurs to a small extent in our sun, but is dominant in stars greater than about 1.3 times the mass of the sun. This is because the CNO chain reaction requires greater temperatures than the proton-proton chain reaction, and larger stars tend to be hotter. As our sun gets warmer and ages, however, the CNO cycle will become more dominant. This reaction occurs in two branches. The first branch starts when hydrogen combines with carbon-12 to produce nitrogen-13, which then decays to carbon-13 and a positron. Carbon-13 combines with another hydrogen nucleus to make nitrogen-14. Nitrogen-14 then combines with another hydrogen to make oxygen-15. Oxygen-15 decays to nitrogen-15 and a positron. When nitrogen-15 combines with a final hydrogen, a helium nucleus and carbon-12 are formed. The net reaction still involves four hydrogen nuclei combining to form helium, but the process by which this reaction takes place is different. Occasionally, when nitrogen-15 and hydrogen combine, instead of forming carbon-12 and helium, they form oxygen-16. Oxygen-16 combines with hydrogen to make fluorine-17, which decays to oxygen-17 and a positron. When oxygen-17 combines with a hydrogen, it forms nitrogen-14 and helium. When the sun's core runs out of hydrogen to fuse, it will swell to about 200 times its current diameter and become what is known as a red giant. During this phase, hydrogen will still fuse into helium in a shell around the core, producing helium that sinks to the core. The core becomes more and more massive and starts to contract. Eventually, it hits a point where temperature does not affect density and only quantum mechanical effects provide a force to counteract gravity. At this point, the sun's core cannot contract anymore, and it is called degenerate. The contraction of the core causes it to heat up until eventually it gets hot enough to start fusing helium through the triple alpha process. In the triple alpha process, two helium nuclei, or alpha particles, combine to form beryllium, which rapidly combines with another helium nucleus to make carbon-12. Carbon-12 can sometimes combine with another helium atom to make oxygen-16. Helium fusion rapidly heats up the core, increasing reaction rates, raise the temperature to a few hundred million degrees, and then there is a runaway fusion of helium which overcomes the degeneracy, and for a few minutes, the helium flash releases more energy than the entire galaxy. However, most of this energy goes into removing degeneracy and expanding the sun's core, and thus never leaves the star. In large stars, there is no helium flash as helium fusion begins before the core becomes degenerate. 
After the helium flash, the sun will contract again. It then reaches the horizontal branch stage of its life cycle, where helium fuses to make carbon and oxygen, which begin to build up in the core. The sun will grow again as it enters the asymptotic giant branch stage, where fusion only occurs in a thin layer of hydrogen in the star, except for brief flashes where enough helium builds up to fuse, which is known as a thermal pulse. A wind develops in the sun's envelope which blows the outer layers into space, forming what is known as a planetary nebula. The sun is not big enough to ever generate the temperatures necessary to fuse carbon or oxygen, so its fusion stops here. However, more massive stars can fuse carbon and oxygen. Neon, magnesium, silicon, and iron will form as a result. An interesting thing happens with iron, however. Iron has a very high binding energy, which means that fusing it absorbs rather than releases energy. Though nickel-62 is technically more stable, there is no straightforward way to make it in stars, so iron is considered the stopping point in stellar fusion. When the sun runs out of helium to fuse, it becomes a white dwarf, a small, dense sphere composed mainly of carbon and oxygen. It is once again degenerate, supported against gravity only by quantum mechanical processes. It still releases light because of its temperature, but will eventually cool until it no longer emits a significant amount of visible light, and is then known as a black dwarf. For large stars, eventually the iron core can no longer support itself against gravitational pressure, and it collapses, triggering a type II supernova. The inner part of the core is compressed into neutrons. Eventually, the remaining material will bounce off this dense core and out into space, leaving behind a dense core of neutrons, known as a neutron star. It is in this process that elements heavier than iron form. Now, if the core is still so massive that the degeneracy pressure of neutrons cannot overcome the gravitational force, a black hole may form, and that's where things really get weird. To review, the heaviest stable elements the sun will make is oxygen, though it will briefly make an unstable isotope of fluorine during the CNO process. Heavier stars confuse carbon and oxygen, but the heaviest stable elements a star can make is iron, because fusing elements heavier than iron results in a loss of energy. Elements heavier than iron are made in supernovas. Oh, and stars are awesome.